Hello and welcome back. We are winding down our U.S. Constitution unit. This video is going to go over the first part of the articles of the Constitution as well as how our Constitution is organized. So our Constitution is broken down into three main parts. The first part is the preamble, which is kind of like the introduction where we figure out what we're saying, why we're saying it. The second part is the articles, and this is how our government is set up, okay? The first three articles deal with the three branches, um, and then we go on and from there. The amendments, these are the changes or additions to the Constitution, and most of them deal specifically with protecting rights of the people. So without further ado, let's get to Article 1. So Article 1 establishes the legislative branch. The legislative branch makes laws. Yes, oh, yes, it does. The legislative branch includes Congress, which is our House of Representatives and our Senate. So um, in our bicameral legislature, there are different requirements and terms for members of each of the houses. So in the Senate, which is considered the upper house of Congress, you have to be 35 years old. I'm sorry, you have to be 30 years old. You have to have been a citizen of the United States for at least nine years and you have to live in the state that you're going to represent okay or have a residence there and we'll talk about that in class okay and the senate serves six-year terms so if you get elected to the senate every six years you're up for re-election okay uh in the house of representatives if you want to be a member of the house you have to be at least 25 years old you have to have been a citizen for at least seven years and you have to live in the district or have a residence in the district that you're gonna represent. And we'll look at those things in class as well. In the House of Representatives, they only serve two-year terms, okay? It's important to remember that there are no term limits for members of the House and the Senate. So if you can get elected for 60 years, then you go for it. I, that sounds awful, but anyway. So one of the big things that is found in Article One that pretty much sets up um, Congress's authority to do a lot of stuff is called the Elastic Clause. And it, the actual technical name for it is the Necessary and Proper Clause. But this clause specifically gives Congress the power to make all laws that are necessary and proper. Okay, now that seems kind of vague, right? So that's why we call it the Elastic Clause because it stretches the power of Congress. It gives them a lot of authority. So if a specific power isn't listed in the Constitution, well, it could fall under the Elastic Clause, okay? So moving on uh, to expressed and enumerated powers. For our purposes in government, expressed powers and enumerated powers are gonna be the same thing. Expressed powers are those that are written down in the Constitution, and enumerated powers are those that are numbered in the Constitution, specifically Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 through 18. And we'll look at those in class, okay? So these are where we get the specific powers, specific responsibilities of Congress. All right, moving on to Article 2. Um, Article 2 is, of course, the executive branch. The executive branch enforces the laws. Yes, oh, yes, it does. And this includes the president, vice president, and the members of his cabinet, which um, we'll talk about in class as well. So requirements to serve. If you want to be president, you've got to be 35 years old. You have to have been a citizen of the United States or resident of the United States for 14 years. And you have to be a natural born citizen, which means you have to have been born in the United States or one of its territories. And we'll talk about a couple other gray areas with that as well. The term of office, we know this, presidents serve four-year terms, and if a president has been in office for um, 10 years, then they have pretty much, um, they've exhausted their, their term limit, okay? And we'll talk about how that works as well. So the source of presidential power, this is the, I'm going to move myself a little bit here, there we go. The source of presidential power is the wild card clause. Now, the wild card clause of the Constitution, and if you think about like playing Uno or something like that, the wild card clause pretty much gives the president um, a lot of power because in this clause, it says that the executive power of the United States shall be vested in a president. It doesn't tell us what executive power is or what executive power isn't. It just tells us that he has it. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and stop there for this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know.